What if a single technological breakthrough could change the future of transportation, renewable energy, and consumer electronics? For decades, the battery has been a bottleneck, but one company, QuantumScape, has solved this. They've developed a revolutionary, anode-free, solid-state battery that's not just a small upgrade, but a complete reinvention of energy storage. This breakthrough in energy density isn't just a science experiment, but rather is technologies being licensed and manufactured to major automotive makers like Volkswagen. Stay tuned as we go through the details on if QuantumScape can become the next CATL, a major innovator of battery technologies. Now to understand what are QuantumScape's solid state batteries, let's take a look at a schematic of a typical lithium ion battery. In simple terms, it has a cathode, an anode, and a liquid electrolyte that acts as a transport medium for the lithium ions. In comparison, a QuantumScape solid state battery removes the graphite anode layer and replaces the flammable liquid electrolyte with a thin ceramic separator. Removing these two aspects of the battery increases the energy density since more lithium can now be filled in the area previously filled by the graphite anode, and it is much safer since there's no flammable liquid electrolytes. This benefit in the battery chemistry brings real-world tangible benefits. Looking at the electric vehicle segment, and by eliminating the bulky in a layer, more lithium can be stored in the battery, which will lead to longer driving ranges. This isn't just a few extra miles, no. This is a step change from 300 to 350 miles to 400 to 500 miles of range. These batteries also are faster to charge by being able to charge at this increased range up to 80% in less than 15 minutes. Third point is solid state batteries will be cheaper since they do not need the anode material nor the manufacturing costs to produce the anode materials. Fourth point is these batteries have longer lifespans demonstrating being able to preserve 95% of the initial capacity after a thousand charge cycles, or roughly 350,000 miles. Lastly, there's significantly less risk of fires from EV accidents. This technology can also help lithium ion based energy storage products store energy longer. Most lithium ion utility scale energy storage products have two to four hours of energy storage. Solid states can increase that at a much cheaper cost. Laptops, smartphones, smartwatches also have the same benefits, a longer lasting battery that can be smaller and charge faster than today's current state. Now I've spent a lot of time on this video so far on the breakthrough potential of QuantumScape's battery could have, as I do want to stress the importance of this novel innovation. So we've emphasized the reward should QuantumScape be successful. Now let's look at where they are in commercializing this technology. As of today, QuantumScape has licensed this technology to Volkswagen subsidiary PowerCo, who has just gotten started on baseline production of components and are working on installing higher volume cell production equipment. The target for Volkswagen is to start building customer sellable vehicles with these solid state batteries in 2026, which would be a huge milestone for QuantumScape. Earlier this month, Ducati Motorcycles had the first live demonstration of a QuantumScape solid state battery while at the IAA Mobility Show in Germany, also a major first for QuantumScape on its path to commercialization. So far, the narrative for QuantumScape seems phenomenal as breakthrough technology and a path to start customer sellable production in 2026. Now let's go through the two major risks. First is to emphasize that QuantumScape is a pre-revenue company with additional cash advances from Volkswagen, QuantumScape's management is advising that there is enough cash reserves to cover to 2029, so roughly the next three years. One thing I want to emphasize, though, is even though this seems like a long period, it really is not, as it's one thing to make these batteries in small prototype runs, versus it is really tough to ramp and produce in mass production quantities with acceptable yields. Assuming production starts end of next year, this is just two years for Volkswagen to be able to scale up production to high enough volumes for the licensing revenues to be free cash flow positive for QuantumScape. That's aggressive and also assumes that any challenges that Volkswagen meets while ramping these mass-produced volumes could be solved without impacting the benefits that were generated 
from the subscale prototype runs. Now the second major risk is competition from CATL. CATL is like the Taiwan Semi for battery technology. They're the best at it and an expert in commercialization. They aren't working on a pure solid state battery like QuantumScape, but they're working on a condensed semi-solid state to iteratively increase the energy density and charge and speeds. If these iterative changes continue throughout the years, it might be enough to close the gap and render the solid state batteries not as big of a reward. Now, before we share our thoughts on if we will add QuantumScape as a speculative stock to our community portfolio, please read the disclaimer in the notes below. We're not financial advisors, nor should anything we say be considered financial advice. Also, if you like content like this, please help us out and click like or subscribe as we aim to bring analyses on long-term innovative focus companies twice a week. Now let's put QuantumScape through my five-point framework. From a leadership perspective, their founder, John Deep Sung, had served as CEO until 2024 and has since left QuantumScape completely to focus on a new startup. Not a great look, as the company replaced him with someone who is supposed to have more experience in commercialization of novel technologies. Their new CEO came from Western Digital, where his actual results for their execution was spotty. The only reason this overall is a neutral versus a weak is QuantumScape has a strong board. In particular, Tesla co-founder and former chief technology officer, J.B. Straubel. He's an expert at battery chemistries and on how to commercialize battery technologies, so his involvement is critical for a thesis on QuantumScape. For evaluation, I gave this a week. From a business life cycle, I had them here in the startup phase. They ultimately just came public way too early. They are at least three years from meaningful revenue, and even if they do reach their projections, they are still trading at greater than six times 2029 price to sales. Overall a week. Revenue and profit growth, I have this as a very weak, long journey ahead and plenty of manufacturing challenges ahead as well before they're generating profits. Total addressable market, I have as a strong. Enhancements to battery technologies have far-reaching implications for many industries that go beyond just the obvious electric vehicles. For secular tailwinds, I have this as a neutral. Globally, there's still a multi-decade push to renewable energy in electric vehicles. However, the competition with CATL is just too much for me, but I believe CATL will continue their leadership in battery technology. Overall, though, I am a no on QuantumScape. The 30x stock reward is enticing from a potential upside, but they have a long journey ahead to get there. I'd be willing to pay a higher price for this in the coming years if they can prove that they've gotten through the mass production ramp up. What are your thoughts, Dad, on this one? Thank you, Scott, for that wonderful presentation. Yes, okay, for the, I want to go over my uh, technical uh, evaluation. So for the company fundamentals, the dividend, there's no dividend, and the beta is 4.42, which means it's basically four times more volatile than the S&P 500. And the earnings comes out October 22, so that's a neutral to negative. For the earnings history of the last four quarters, it only beat two of the last four quarters. So that's a neutral. And that's generous, but I'll give it a neutral. For the um, financials, there's no profit, so I have to look at cash flow per share, and that's a negative as well. So it's negative 72 cents. Debt to equity is, is good. At least it's only 3%. And there's no peg ratio because it doesn't earn anything. So um, so for that, I give it a neutral to negative. Now for the stock technicals, I like to look at the uh, the chart for the challenger bands. As you can see, it's it's very wide. It's a very volatile stock. It was, as you can see, it was very narrow for a while. Then it became very volatile. Then it it got a little less volatile. It got a little closer together. But now the the price is is. Uh, is pierce the upper band, which is, as I mentioned prior, only 95 out of out of 100, it's within the band. So only five times out of 100 trade trading days, it does that. So anyway, um, it's good, but, you know, if you're a momentum player, it's good, but I'm not a momentum player myself, and I don't think this portfolio is. So anyway, so that's the Bollinger Band. Like I say, it's very volatile, but, but the upper band is, it's been pierced, so we don't know what's going to happen. My, my, 
my feeling is is probably go back to 12, but that's just my my feeling of, of it, which you never know. And then for the moving average, the 50 days above the 200 day, the 200 day moving average slope is positive, and the price is above both of them, so that's that's really good. Then I looked at the uh, slow stochastic oscillator, and it's overbought. It's at it's a 91 percent, and um, that's overbought. So uh, right now this the stock has been overbought. So that's so so for this I'm giving it a neutral, and then for the analyst coverage. There's two strong sells, two holds, and two buys. And the institution holdings is only 32%, which means, that, again, it's more volatile because institutions can't, can't damper the, the stock price because it takes them a long time to sell things, um, if that makes sense. So anyway, for that, I'm a, um, neutral to negative. So my overall take is it's a wonderful technology. And I hope it works. And I would also hope, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I would hope that the administration may take, may take um, a liking to this company and maybe put some government money in. But that's just a, a, that's just a rumor, not even a rumor. That's just my, my two cents on it. So anyway, my, my take is that I'm a no. And if I was a speculative player, I would maybe wait for it to get to 12. But that's my take. So back to you, Scott. Thanks, Dad. Overall, we will pass on QuantumScape. There is no question if QuantumScape's technology can come to fruition as planned, then this could be a market bean stock. They've demonstrated it works on subscale builds and prototypes, but haven't gotten it through the toughest hurdle, volume production, which any challenges on that can push out their meaningful revenue beyond just a few years into the 2030s. It's just too early for us to get involved in this. With that said, thank you for watching. Please help us out and click like and subscribe as we aim to analyze the most innovative companies twice per week. Until next time, happy investing.